And here we have Duff, Duff Light, and our newest flavor, Duff Dry. What does the future hold for Duff? <laughs> Let's just say we've got a few ideas up our sleeve. Like what? Um, uh, I'd rather not get into it right now. Why not? All right. We don't have any ideas for the future. We got nothing. Happy? No. There are a lot of bad movies released today, but for the past 10 years or so, a lot of these bad movies included a select group of four individuals that acted and starred in this horrendous mess, which is why the internet and myself are dubbing them the four horsemen of the movie Apocalypse. Because every time you see one of these horsemen in a movie, that will be the death of you. I'm only joking. Well, not really. Every time I see a trailer and one of these four horsemen appear in it, I straight up know to almost a certainty that this is going to be another movie I'm going to skip. I'm telling you, if you see these four horsemen in the same movie, run. Luckily, as far as I'm aware, the maximum number that any of them have been collectively together in a film is three, which in my opinion is already deep into Judgment Day. But which of these four horsemen is the worst? Are there any redeeming factors for any of them? And how on earth has mainstream cinema become dominated and desecrated by these four individuals whose films have collectively generated over billions of dollars? Let's go through each one of these devastating horsemen and how I would rank them from least to worst in terms of destruction, starting with my least hated individual, Jack Black. Jack Black has for a long time always been essentially a sweetheart of comic relief in cinema history. And I have actually been a fan of him since first coming across him in School of Rock and moving on all the way up to Tropic Thunder. I also have a personal soft spot for him unrelated to his filmography simply because of his musical side in the band Tenacious D, which is arguably my favourite project that he has ever done. But that's a complete other sideshow to his filmography, which is what's at question right here. And the only reason he's the least worst of the four horsemen is because of his choices for movies, particularly as of late. Like I said, early on in his career, Jack Black was essentially box office gold. He was a genuine bona fide A-lister who oozed charismatic loud energy while at the same time seemed incredibly down to earth. And the films he acted in were for the most part very solid if not great comedies. Films like Shallow Hal, Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny, School of Rock, Nacho Libre and Tropic Thunder were all a good showcase of his comedic talents. Was he maybe a one-trick pony? Possibly. But he was still very entertaining and he had a great sense of what it took to perform physical comedy especially. But since 2010, Jack Black hasn't really done anything as near as exciting as what he came up with initially. Nowadays, it just seems like easy pickings or fairly midline, very safe projects from movies like The House with the Clock in the Walls, Goosebumps, The Super Mario Brothers movie, movie and the rebooted Jumanji series, all based on existing IP or known popular franchises or books. The only real interesting point of note that feels the most unique or different in his filmography is the film The Holiday or Bernie, which at least speaks to some volumes to his acting chops, but otherwise it's more of the same and perhaps just another easy cash grab. Now with his upcoming film The Minecraft Movie, to me it just feels like the days of the old Jack Black are officially gone as they make way for a man who now takes on projects that feel more safe and not as adventurous as before, while also kind of showcasing how maybe he's growing a little out of touch with the audiences who once adored and loved him. But for now, he is the least worst of the four horsemen, and I'm hoping it doesn't get any worse, which is why I'm going to give him three steaming piles of dog shit out of ten. Speaking of out of touch, next on the list is an actress who seems to echo that sentiment more loudly than anyone else here with Gal Gadot. Now let me add, I don't know her personally and this is not an attack on her character, but rather of her decisions as an actress and the films that she's been in because, let's face it, some of them have just been terrible and in my personal opinion, I just don't think she is the best actress. I don't know what it is or how best to explain it, but every time I see her in a film, she just doesn't sound convincing. Almost every line of dialogue I hear from her just feels off or awkward or like she's reading directly off a script that's in front of her rather than coming across as something like how her character would genuinely say and feel. And I'm not trying to disparage her accent or anything. There's just something off about her delivery and it ends up ultimately feeling fake. I don't want to presume anything but I wouldn't be surprised if part of how she became an actress was with respect to her good looks. And don't get me wrong, she is genuinely 
beautiful, but I always had that feeling that she was more of a model first, actress second type of person who entered into the world through her modeling career and then began learning how to become an actress afterwards. And reading her bio on Wikipedia speaks something to that effect, with her auditioning to be a Bond girl for the film Quantum of Solace before being picked up later for Fast and Furious due to her experiences also being in the Israeli Defense Forces. But I digress. Model or no model, to me, her acting skills are still somewhat questionable, even if I do feel like she really does look the part for roles like Wonder Woman. It's certainly not her fault for being an attractive individual and gaining attention from casting directors and producers, but were it not for my genuine love for the hilarious nature of the Fast and Furious franchise, I honestly do not know if I would be watching any of her films. Certainly not movies like Art of Stone, Red Notice, Death on the Nile, and Keeping Up with the Joneses. It was enough to tolerate her in Justice League and Batman vs Superman, but those are easily mistakes I would happily ignore in the future. I won't even touch her video of Imagine by John Lennon, which is why I'm only going to give her five and a half steaming piles of dog shit out of ten. Moving on to a man whose filmography is almost as big as his muscles with The Rock. I'm putting him here as the second worst out of all the four horsemen because Jesus Christ, like Homer Simpson eating donuts in hell, he doesn't know how to say no to taking on another bad project. And this is me speaking as a fan of him back in his WWE days and having that feeling when he started acting that he was going to be the next Arnold Schwarzenegger. But damn, as much as I love The Rock, I just can't stand any of the films he's decided to be in, especially as of late. For me, the downhill started somewhere around the movie San Andreas, because after that we got films like Central Intelligence, Baywatch, the rebooted Jumanji series, Skyscraper, Rampage, Black Adam, Jungle Cruise, Red Notice, and DC League of Super Pets. Now I try my best to not judge too harshly anyone's taste in movies, because if you do genuinely like any of those movies just mentioned, then I am genuinely happy for you, and maybe even semi-jealous of how you can do so. But I'm sorry. Those kind of movies aren't for me because those kind of movies are just mindless popcorn stuffing to turn off your brain. And when you've opened your movie palette to so many other kind of movies and quote unquote better movies, then these just pale in comparison. And I'm not just saying everything looks god awful when compared to something like The Godfather, but please, even if you just watched your average animated cartoon or a standard rom-com these days, I'm telling you, your time is so much more better spent than sitting through something like the movie Baywatch. Now, like I said, I like The Rock, but more so as a person and as an actor, more so in his earlier career with films like The Mummy, Walking Tall, The Other Guys, and even something like The Tooth Fairy. He's also someone who is clearly incredibly driven, hardworking, and has a passion to do great things and be successful, which is also remarkable given his background and the way he started off with very little before his time in WWE. But all of that does not translate to him being in good movies, at least as of late. And while I have this feeling he wanted to become the biggest action star on the planet, effectively taking over the reins from Arnold Schwarzenegger, to me, they are still completely different actors and from two different bygone eras. In each case, I can make the argument that both The Rock and Schwarzenegger play the same type of character in almost all of their movies. They each were the muscle action hero who oozed or at least had some sort of charisma or comedic charm to them and most importantly tried to be as entertaining as they could be. But unlike The Rock, Schwarzenegger's filmography was so memorable and so much more interesting and enjoyable. I believe this was the case especially because most of his films were at least somewhat different to each other, or had a very unique premise and concepts that served as a vehicle for him to star in as the ultimate action hero. You've got films like Predator, Commando, Total Recall, Terminator, Running Man, True Lies, and Kindergarten Cop. All having an action theme, but if you think about the details a little bit more, are all actually so different to each other. Hell, even later on with his more out there films like Junior, Jingle All the Way, or Twins, they're all still different. But most importantly, almost all of these films were genuinely more entertaining, and at least for the better part, better written. That's what distinguished Schwarzenegger to The Rock, who just right now 
Pixar seems to be making the dumbest of the dumbest films that I for one feel like most of the time are an easy choice to skip. Hopefully he decides to take on some more interesting roles in the future like his upcoming film The Smashing Machine but at this point in time I'm not holding my breath which is why I'm going to give him 8 steaming piles of dog shit out of 10. And now we come to the creme de la creme of the four horsemen aka Kevin Hart. If there has ever been an individual who has done more damage to the history of cinema, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone else more impressive in terms of destruction than this man. Kevin Hart has single-handedly ruined and tarnished the comedy genre of movies for the past decade or so. Ever since the film Ride Along came out in 2014 and all the way to his recent deal with Netflix, I have just never found almost any of his movies to be either well written or funny or at least some level of entertaining. He just doesn't do it for me, period. Now I've watched some of these films with friends who have laughed out loud to them, so I do know firsthand that there is a market audience for Kevin Hart. And even just watching how big his comedy specials or tours have gotten with crowd size, there is proof in the pudding that people do find him funny somehow. But for whatever reason, I just don't get it. It's crude or dumb at worst, and uninspiring or mediocre at best. Surprisingly, it's the earlier films of Kevin Hart that I found the most enjoyable. Like Jack Black or The Rock, it seems that for whatever reason, the earlier films of Kevin Hart are actually where I think he's the best in, and films like Scary Movie or The 40 Year Old Virgin are actually the odd standouts of his roles that genuinely do make me laugh. Part of this, of course, is how well the characters and jokes he has to play with. From the hilarious paradox arguments in Scary Movie 3 and 4, or the angry customer in The 40 Year Old Virgin, which make me actually enjoy Kevin Hart, and he does play his part very well. These are also examples where he's not the main character and we just get a small injection of him which to me is perfect because I think it serves the roles better that way and possibly goes to show how much I can tolerate his comedy musings with smaller doses being way more preferable. But I'm sorry, everything else can just be left alone on an abandoned island and if I have to sit through another viewing of the film Me Time, I'm going to need a new brain. The better parts I've seen of Kevin Hart lately are with his relationship with The Rock, who often have that hate-love camaraderie or banter towards one another, which I'm not saying by no means is the best banter ever, and their whole shtick does feel a little bit repetitive, but at least it has some funny moments from time to time, and maybe I'm partial to humour at the expense of someone else, so seeing them take small jabs at each other in real life is funnier to me than any of their other scripted nonsense. But I just just can't do another Kevin Hart movie. I just can't. It'll kill me. And I even say that knowing how much he's been through as a comic and how he has taken so much shit from everyone which actually makes me respect and admire him at a certain level. Because for what it's worth, Kevin Hart is an example of someone who is persistent, dedicated, hardworking and is able to push through so many hurdles and challenges to ultimately be successful. But at the same time, he's just the worst. And I view his humour, his jokes, his comedic choices as of late as just being completely dumb. Maybe that's why he's grown to be equally as successful by playing more and more to Hollywood and network slash streaming executives that want to put out more and more equally safe, simple and dumb generic unoffending comedies for audiences that I feel like become dumber as a result for watching them. Which is why for our final and worst horseman, I'm going to give Kevin Hart 10 steaming piles of dog shit out of 10. Lord help us if there's going to be a sequel to me time. Good yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. Ooh. Ooh. Oh God. Ooh. I apologize. Hey. Oh. I'm still doing a review on Yelp. As you guys know, that was we did 20 ticks, and that was the best one. Max Lord, you're putting yourself and everyone else in grave danger. I need you to give me the stone. What happened to it? 